Hello, this is Brian Resney, president of Resney Wealth Management and host of the Resney Wealth Report. We've got a great show for you today. We will be taking your calls and questions. Please send an email question to Brian Resney at ResneyWealth.com. Make sure you do visit our website, ResneyWealth.com, and sign up for instant email alerts about the economy, recessions, managing the risk in your portfolio, investment strategy, and so on. Great information comes to you free one or twice a week via email. Go to ResneyWealth.com. You'll be glad you did. You know, I want to talk today about investments that you really should avoid as an investor. I've been managing money for almost 30 years. I've seen a lot of bad investment advice often coming from Wall Street firms, so-called advisors, and annuity salespeople. Make sure the advice you're receiving is real advice. We'll talk more about that uh, later on in the show. But I want to talk about eight investments that will ultimately hurt your investment portfolio, or there could be potentially much better options for your money. Eight investments you must avoid. If your advisor is pushing any of these, you should have serious concerns about your investment relationship with that firm. Number one, hedge funds. Hedge funds are sold by a lot of Wall Street firms. These things have crazy expenses, often approaching four, five, six percent a year, average expenses internal that you, the consumer, pay. Those crazy high expenses often take away from your return. The other thing is hedge funds often are risky investments. They're pushed by Wall Street firms because of the lavish commissions or trail commissions they often pay those firms. I can tell you from our research, most hedge funds, and I would probably say 95 plus percent, have done really lousy jobs managing the risk, and they've made really lousy returns because of the expenses. So make sure you avoid these. These are often called other alternative investments, hedge funds, future funds, things of that nature. So make sure as an investor, don't be sold something that it sounds like it's going to help manage your risk when it really doesn't because the overall expenses strip away the net return. Hedge funds, in my opinion, should be avoided even by the smartest or wealthiest investor. Leverage investments, including margin on your brokerage account. Brokerage firms, again, like to use leverage because they can buy more investments and ultimately make more commissions for them. Avoid leverage at all costs in your portfolio and avoid any investment that deploys leverage. As an example, you can get involved in an ETF and exchange traded fund that may be two times leverage or by two times the market. Leverage will get you into trouble. I am not a believer in leverage, whether it's leveraged investments to try and pump up return, stay away, or if it's margin on your brokerage account, stay away. These things have ultimately hurt investors more than they've ever helped them but people will get suckered into thinking they're gonna make more money. Ultimately, you lose a lot more than you'll ever make with leverage. Stay away. Variable annuities. You've heard me talk about variable annuities before, but of course, annuity salespeople and brokerage firms love to sell them. Why? The commissions. When you buy a variable annuity, regardless if you're gonna buy 100,000 or $10 million, there's no break points in commissions, so brokers like to sell them. The commissions can often approach eight or 9% on a variable annuity. The problem with variable annuities, a few. Number one, you pay higher taxes when you take the money out. Number two, you insanely lock your money up with surrender penalties that often can go as long as nine years to get all of your money. Number three, expenses, and expenses do matter, folks. I've reviewed hundreds, if not thousands of annuities over my 30-year experience as a money manager. And what I've seen is horrifically high expenses. The typical variable annuity that I've reviewed has annual, annual every single year against your money, annual expense ratios often approaching four and a half plus percent a year. Sure, some are less, I've seen some a lot more, but four and a half percent. So imagine this, if your portfolio makes 6% and your expenses are four and a half, how much do you get to keep of that return? One and a half percent. So if you're invested in the equity markets inside a variable annuity, you're taking the same risk as the market, but you can never make anything remotely close to those returns because it's being stripped away with high expenses. Your broker won't tell you about these expenses, but it's your job to read the fine print and read about annuities. They're dangerous to your wealth, 
They're dangerous to your retirement. High expenses matter and it strips away your return. Imagine paying an extra three and a half or four percent expense ratio every year over 10 or 20 years. Imagine how much you would lose on your retirement income. Are you starting to get the point? Find out the facts why annuities are ultimately dangerous for your wealth and your retirement. Equity index and hybrid annuities. These are different than variable annuities sold by so-called advisors. I call them a wolf in sheep's clothing. Equity index annuities are often sold by brokers who really just have an insurance license. These things also have high expenses, but they're usually pitched that you get free money bonuses or 8% returns, often on blatant lies. The bottom line is this, equity index annuities can have surrender penalties also that can approach as long as 22 years and as high as 22% penalties to get all of your money from day one. That's ridiculous. You also pay higher taxes when the money comes out on money that you did make. And at the end of the day, it does not include the dividend in the calculation for your return, an added extra almost 2% in loss of return just from that. There are expenses with equity index annuities. There's no free lunch with equity index annuities. Plan on making very low rates of return with an equity index annuity, probably in the range of one to 2%. You may be told something different, but if you studied and read the fine print, you'll realize if you make one to 2% a year on an equity index annuity, you will be lucky. And again, for that, you insanely lock your money up with huge surrender penalties to get all of your money. Read the fine print, buyer beware. IPOs or initial public offerings. These are often sold through Wall Street firm or investment banking firms. And these are companies that basically want to go public. They sign a contract. That brokerage firm is now obligated to sell these IPOs, often at inflated prices. IPOs tend to be more risky because there's not a lot of good hardcore financial data long term on these firms. I would avoid IPOs at all cost because I think they're a risky venture for the average investor. Unless you are very astute, you've done substantial amounts of homework and research, avoid IPOs. I've seen too many people lose a fortune in IPOs, far more than ever even made a dollar buying an initial public offering stock. Penny stocks. These are often stocks trading at less than $5, sometimes trading at 10 cents or 30 or 40 cents. These are stocks you also want to avoid. Rule of thumb, folks, any stock trading under $5 typically will not get institutional uh, recognition, maybe research or ownership. Big firms, big money managers will not look at stocks that are less than $5. But small investors get brought into these because they feel, wow, if it's a 40 cent stock, if it just goes to 80, I'm going to make a boatload of money. Often companies that are trading less than $5 tells you they're in financial hardship and potentially could be in bankruptcy not too far in the distant future. Avoid low priced penny stock investments. Gold and silver coins. You heard it on TV all the time. You get the celebrity, he pulls up in his golf cart, he tells you he's buying gold coins. He's buying a uh, silver. Bottom line is gold and silver coins often sell at inflated prices, sometimes approaching 100 to 2,000% over value. So let me give you an example. They sell you a gold coin that they say, hey, there's a gold coin that's worth $10,000. Or they sell it to you for $10,000. It might only be worth $8,000. But they tell you it's going to grow in value or we're seeing it's going to grow in value over time. Gold coins and silver coins are highly marked up, avoid them. Gold from a commercial, don't buy it. If you're gonna own uh, gold, look at ETFs or exchange traded funds. You can buy silver or gold through an ETF if it makes sense for your strategy and portfolio. Never buy gold or gold coins off a commercial. You will often pay high inflated prices, meaning you have to make up a huge margin of difference before you even break even. Avoid gold and silver. It's usually a sucker's game. And if you're getting those emails to talk about the world coming to an end and gold and silver is going to save you, think again. That's again sales propaganda trying to sell you inflated gold and silver coins at prices you don't want to pay. Non-traded REITs, real estate investment trusts. Let me give you a little tip of the day. If you want to own real estate, 
you can buy an ETF, an exchange traded fund, or buy a traded stock that owns real estate and pays a dividend that's 100% liquid and 100% of your money goes into your investment day one. If you buy a non-traded REIT sold through a Wall Street firm, these are non-traded. Once you get in, you don't know when you can get out. You lose liquidity. Also, the typical non-traded REIT takes about a 20% haircut off your initial investment for, because of underwriting fees and commissions. I'll put it to you simple. If you invested $100,000 in a non-traded REIT, the typical one's gonna take $20,000 of your $100,000 day one to pay commissions and underwriting fees to the brokerage firm or the firm that developed the actual REIT itself. Don't do it. Look at a traded REIT where all of your money goes to work. That's better for you, not good for your broker, but look out for yourself because your broker probably is not. There's an old saying, a fool and his money will soon part. Greed is a bad investment decision, but greed sells. You give people a lot of fluff and they want to jump on it. Make sure you read the fine print on any investment you're being sold, especially annuities and especially non-traded REITs. Don't fall for the free dinner sales pitch. And I'm going to repeat that. Don't fall for the free steak dinner sales pitch. These are pitches often by annuity people to sell you a high priced annuity that's going to insanely lock your money up. There's no free dinners. It's going to cost you more than you ever thought if you invest in those products that insanely lock your money up. And the bottom line, seniors are often the target for these free dinner seminars and these sales pitches because they have the money. You show up, steakhouse, free dinner, the guy gives you a great presentation, talks about free money bonuses. It's not going to happen, folks. There is no free money and there's no 8% returns. Read the fine print, protect your net worth, get real advice, go to ResonyWealth.com, schedule a consultation with my firm. We do have offices right here in Naples and in Fort Myers. It's time you received a second opinion. Get your retirement and your portfolio back on track. Do what's right for you because your retirement depends on it. I'm gonna take a short break. I'm gonna come back with questions about the economy, the investment, and the overall well-being of the United States. I'll be right back after this. Hello, this is Brian Resney. If your goals are to increase your retirement income and retire without stress, go to my website and download our groundbreaking free report. This free report covers the investment and retirement pitfalls that are often overlooked even by the smartest investor. If you're concerned about outliving your money during retirement, or maybe you wanna make sure you're not leaving money on the table, this free report is for you. Know the facts, your retirement depends on it. Go to my website, resneywealth.com and download your free report right now. And we're back. We're taking your questions, of course. Send them to Brian Resney at ResneyWealth.com. And please visit our website, ResneyWealth.com. You can sign up for instant email alerts to receive information from my firm about the economy, investment strategy, what you should and should not be doing with your money. And it's all free. Just plug in your email address. But go to ResneyWealth.com. And as always, call my firm for a consultation. If you're concerned about the advice you're receiving, if you're concerned about the ability of the firm you're working with, if you're concerned about your returns on your portfolio, call us, schedule a consultation. Let's find out what's going on. Let's get you back on track. Remember your retirement, you get to retire once. Make sure it's the best it is for you and your financial well-being. Ted from Cape Coral, Florida. I enjoyed watching your TV show and your education. How does one pick a qualified investment firm, not a sales organization? Ted, that's an excellent question. Um, we get that a lot. At the end of the day, and again, this is an estimate, I would say about 90% of firms, 90% of firms really are acting in a broker 
suitability capacity, meaning sales, whether it's the nudie guy, a lot of the Wall Street advisors or brokers, independents. Most of these firms really are selling product and they're not really managing money. Um, about 10% of firms nationally are fee only registered investment advisory firms. These would be firms that actually manage money and are required to act as a fiduciary like Resney Wealth Management and always work in the client's best interest and legally for the client. Whereas a broker works for his Wall Street firm or the annuity salesperson works for the annuity sales firm that he or she sells product for. Um, what I would suggest you do is go to my website resneywealth.com you can download for free uh, suitability versus uh, fiduciary. It's a questionnaire and a report. It'll discuss fiduciary versus suitability, a little bit more detail, and it's a questionnaire. So when you call up a firm and you schedule an appointment, you can bring that questionnaire. You can find out if the firm is fee only. What I would suggest to you is this, never ever work with any firm that is not fee only. And by the way, no bank, no insurance company and no brokerage firm, Wall Street firm, is a fee-only firm. They all work under commission, maybe fee-based, maybe a combination of the two, but you want to only work with a fee-only registered investment advisory firm in a fiduciary capacity that actually manages your wealth. I hope that answers your question, but go to ResneyWealth.com and download that free questionnaire and report fiduciary suitability. It is your number one investment risk. I think more investors need to be educated about that, and I think you could probably be a smarter, better investor if you did. Tim from Naples, Florida. Would you consider investing in rental in a rental home? What is a realistic return? Uh, Tim, I've been managing money for almost 30 years. I've had literally hundreds of people that I've talked to about rental homes. I've had probably a half a dozen either clients or people that I've talked to over that 30 years actually do well with rentals. But these were people that realized when they started buying rentals, you can't own one or two, you have to own 10, 20, or 30, and it is a full-time business. Um, and you can ultimately do well if you know what you're doing. But buying one rental or two rental homes, what I have found 99% of the time is it's a disaster for you, the investor. First off, um, if you look at the typical person that buys a rental home, even if you paid cash, meaning you had no mortgage, the average person, by the time they rent it out, pay the real estate taxes, maintenance, and all the other expenses around the home, even though there's no mortgage, often will walk away with one to 2% net cash flow in their pocket. Now, if the, poor, if the house grows in value a couple percent and you're making 2% cash flow, your total return is 4%, of course. But you gotta ask yourself, you have to also work on this house. You're responsible to make sure that person's paying the rent and collect the rent and get the maintenance stuff scheduled and all the stuff around that rental home. So even if you just own one, it starts to become at least a part-time job and you're only maybe making 4%, I've seen people lose money on this stuff more often than they've made. Buying rental homes, single or, or, or two or three, if you don't know what you're doing and you don't make it a full-time business, will often lead to low returns, a lot of work for you and frustration. The other problem is if you have a tenant and that tenant decides not to pay you for a year, it could take you a year to evict them. Imagine how much money you now lose if no income's coming in and you still have to pay the expenses. I would avoid individual rental real estate unless you really want to become an expert and you want a full-time occupation. Joan from Marco Island, Florida. My husband passed away a few months ago and handled the investments. Our current advisor is pushing hard for me to move our money into an annuity. What are your thoughts? Joan, fire your uh, uh, broker. Your broker clearly does not have your interest at heart. Why would you get rid of all your investments and pile into an annuity? Clearly your husband knew that wasn't right. That's why he never invested into an annuity. You should not either. What I would suggest you do, Joan, you can call my firm. Let's sit down, let's look at your portfolio. We're a fee-only fiduciary money management firm. We do not sell annuities. We don't work on commission. We legally have to work for you. At least we can sit down with you, give you a helpful second opinion, and see if we can help get your portfolio on the direction you want it to go. But do not, under any circumstance, purchase an annuity. That is clearly a broker advisor who cares about his commission versus your financial well-being. 
Betty from Naples, Florida. We inherited 400k from my father. We don't need the money now, but we want to invest it for our retirement in about 15 years. Our broker wants us to invest in an equity index annuity, but I heard bad things about annuities help. Betty, there's a lot of bad things about annuities, and to be honest, there's really no, nothing good to be said about annuities because if you want to pay higher taxes, if you want to insanely lock your money up for long periods of time with big surrender penalties to get all of your money, if you want to make substandard returns on your money to do all that, then go buy an annuity. But I think smart investors are getting more educated and becoming even smarter. They're staying away from annuities. Annuities are dangerous to your wealth and retirement because of the expenses, the lockup periods, and the higher taxes. They're sold based upon a lot of false promises or lies or misconceptions. Stay away from annuities. Go to my website if you want to learn more about why annuities are not good for you. Go to ResniWealth.com, download our free report, Why Annuities Are Dangerous to Your Wealth and Retirement. Read it twice so you can really understand why annuities are costly and they're going to ultimately take away from your return and shift it to the broker or the insurance company. Fred in Fort Myers, Florida. We finally came to the realization that our current advisor, advisory firm is not working for us, but for him. How does one pick a qualified advisor and research them? Fred, I get that question a lot. In fact, I had a question similar to that earlier. You can go to ResniWealth.com, download our fiduciary versus suitability questionnaire. You can also schedule a consultation with my firm. But what I would suggest you do is go to FINRA.org or SCC.gov um, and basically research the firm that you're going to trust your money to. Um, we're an SEC registered investment advisor. So if you went to SEC.gov, you could pull up Resney Wealth Management. You'll see we have a clean track record, uh, no marks. We've never had a problem with the client, things of that nature. If you go and pulled up a Wall Street firm, any one of them, just plug in their name, you're going to see fine and censure after fine and censure. It seems to be that's kind of their business is fines and censures. You need to research the advisor and the firm to find out what they've done in the past to their clients. You will find that a lot of these firms have had literally hundreds, if not thousands of fines over the years for misdoings against their clients. You need to research that firm. I will tell you this, managing money for almost 30 years, I have had very few people, maybe 20, 30 out of thousands of people I've talked to, even though you can go to FINRA.org, or SEC.gov to check out a broker. When I tell them you can do that and they actually check out their current firm, they're usually just appalled at the misdoings of handling their client's money and the fines. Check the firm out. Do what's right for your portfolio. Take the five minutes to protect your retirement because if you don't, that broker probably will not. Mike from Cape Coral, Florida. Do you like high yield bond mutual funds or stocks? I'm risk adverse. Mike from Cape Coral, first off, high yield bonds or bond funds can have as much volatility as the equity market. You say you're risk adverse. High yield bonds have a lot of volatility. In a recession, high yield bonds can drop 30, 40%, just like equities can. What I would say to you is this, if I look at the overall uh, high yield uh, bond market and I compared it to let's say the S&P 500, the high yield bond market is very overpriced. I would not own high yield bonds. If I owned high yield bonds at this point, I would be a net seller of high yield bonds and bond funds. Um, and I would prefer equities over high yield bonds. But if you are risk adverse, stocks or high yield bonds are gonna probably have more volatility than you want. When you say risk adverse, does that mean per permanent capital loss or do you just never want your money to fluctuate? I think a lot of investors have to really define what risk is. Sometimes somebody will tell me, hey Brian, I'm risk adverse, and all that means is, you know what Brian, I don't want my money to go down 40, 50, 60% and never have a chance to come back. Other people that say risk adverse, they never want their million dollars to even drop a dollar and then they're unhappy. So make sure you understand that volatility is a natural part of investing. If you want a shot or a chance at making a return on your money, more than let's say a government bond today, a 10-year treasury that's paying around one and a half percent, 
you're going to have to take some kind of short-term volatility in order to grow that portfolio for income and uh, future returns. You have to take some short-term volatility. It's inevitable for any investor, no matter really almost how you invest. Tim from Punta Gorda, Florida. I'm looking at a number of high yield stocks to build a portfolio. Do you like a high dividend strategy? Tim, I do not like a high dividend strategy. And again, that is, I do not like a high dividend strategy. I've been asked that question a lot over the years. And basically what a high dividend strategy is this. You take the S&P 500, which is 500 stocks. You basically buy 20 or 30 of the highest dividend yield stocks out of the S&P 500. What you will find from a lot of research out there, you'll actually make less money than buying the S&P 500 as a whole. And why is that? Because the S&P 500, about 80% of the S&P 500 stocks pay little or no dividend. So what you're doing is by just looking at high dividend stocks, you're excluding maybe 80% of quality companies that are growing earnings. The stock price is potentially going up. So don't just look at dividends. You'll find that you often make lesser money in a high dividend uh, strategy like that. I would rather own the S&P, but of course be more diverse than that. But owning the S&P growth and a uh, uh, high yield is actually a better combination than just looking at high dividend stocks alone. But often people say, yeah, but I still get the dividend if the stock price drops. But a lot of times in recessions, folks, the stock price drops and that company then cuts the dividend because they can't keep up with the dividend because their profits are down. So dividends, by the way, can be cut, sometimes eliminated. So don't have a false sense of security by buying high dividend stocks. You're missing a boat and you're probably missing a lot of potential return by looking at a one-sided strategy. You know, I'm getting close out of time. I want to leave you with this. Couple things to remember. Research the firm that you entrust your money to. Okay, go to FINRA.org, go to SCC.gov, go to Resney Wealth Management, download our groundbreaking report, Fiduciary versus Suitability, use that questionnaire. Find out if the firm you entrust your money to is really a fee-only firm or are they a sales organization? And is your portfolio performing the way it should to meet your goals? Are you making money? Are you truly happy with the advice you're receiving? Schedule a review, a consultation with Resney Wealth Management. We have offices right down the road from you in Naples and in Fort Myers. Call us. I'll see you next week. Make sure you have yourself a profitable day.